July 28th, 2014. Good evening, Zambia, and welcome to those countries watching us across Africa. My name is Costa Mwansa, and this is The Assignment. We'd like to say thank you so much for those of you that supported this channel during the 2014 FIFA Brazil World Cup. And during those times, there were a few Sundays for which we could not host this program. Thank you so much to the many texts, the Facebook ups, and indeed the tweets before tonight's interview. Aleisa Aleisa has become the most pronounced slogan in the Zambian political circles lately. The slogan has been synonymous with the United Party for National Development, who some feel have Zambia's messiah to solve the country's economic, political, and social woes. Could HH, as he is fondly known, be a figure not to ignore ahead of the 2016 general elections. After losing elections in 2006, the by-elections in 2008 and subsequently that of the general election in 2011, why does his party, the UPND, and he himself believe that him and the party are the right solution for Zambia beyond 2016? HH, is my guest on the assignment this evening. In the next one and a half hours, we will be talking tough in questions and answers that many of you Zambians seek this evening. President Hitchelema, good evening, and it's a pleasure to have you on the program. Costa, good evening, and good evening, viewers. I'm very, very grateful to be on your program. I haven't been here for a long time. Thank you so much. Yeah. For those mm -hmm. watching across Africa, Botswana, Malawi, Ghana, Nigeria, Yose's social media on Facebook. Our Facebook page is Ask Movie. My Twitter page is at Mwansa Costa. Those in Zambia via all mobile networks, your SMS line is TAS space to 3322. First things first, I think after the 2011 you know, general elections, many thought that probably you would go into some sort of reflection or be very much out of public life. But contrary has happened, I think you've been in the thick of things. Uh, despite the fact that a number of your <coughs> meetings have been affected, but you've been almost all over the country. Why? I think, of course, the answer is quite simple and straightforward. Um, the 2011 election basically was run on the basis of, uh, particularly by the PF, uh, on the basis of uh, a menu of lies. Lies that obviously were never going to, uh, to, to, to last lies that were difficult to sustain. And we knew that it was a matter of time before the people of Zambia began to see through that many of uh, empty promises that the PF uh, you know, delivered to the people, especially, you know, and I, I want to emphasize it, especially post-elections. Why? Because then we were sure that the PF has won in the election, and then they'll go into governing the country with that menu of empty promises. And you know, lies don't have long legs. To stand on. Lies don't have the strength to continue moving on or indeed uh, keeping people hoping. Over time we knew that uh, you know, the Zambians will begin to see through and it didn't even take long. So, But our responsibility Costa was to ensure that we made the Zambians constantly aware to keep checking this menu of commitments or, or if you like uh, uh, promises that uh, the PF made to the people of Zambia. And for us, it was to ensure that the government in office took its programs, its promises to the people seriously. Because you don't go into government uh, costa to make jokes. You go into government to deliver. And yeah, sure. post, post the elections, obviously, we'll be getting on to that in terms of yes. what you claim the PF failing to deliver on its promises. But, but yes. let me take you just back to prior 2011 and just afterwards. Sure. Do you feel, uh, in, in one way, uh, do, do you regret, do, are you regretful of having come out of the PF-UPND pact? Word on the street was that, look, Hagainda lost a good chance of getting into government with the PF. He was too, you know, greedy. He wanted presidency so much that he decided to break away and look where he is now. Had he been in the PF-UPND pact, probably he would have been vice president. Are you regretful of, the, of breaking away? Costa, to the contrary. I think we're very pleased. You know, God works in his own ways. Um, sometimes for us human, 
we may think those are strange ways. But for God, that's the way he works. So we're very pleased, Costa, that we were not part of the PF government in any form post the 2011 elections. And why? The reason is very simple. Because when we were in the, that arrangement between the UPND and the PF, our emphasis, Costa, was to discuss, to focus on how we will run the country, how we will manage the country's economy, which obviously needed special attention because a lot of our people are living under poverty. And to us, that was what was extremely important, to discuss the economic as well as the social program that would offer to the people of Zambia, that would take the people out of the quagmire, the quagmire of poverty which they live under. Yet we are extremely a lucky and rich country. I've, so, used, I've used the term, yeah. do you regret? Because uh, I wanted to avoid using this word, because so many times I've heard media questions thrown at you. Sure. Uh, uh, callers on different platforms. Hagainde, you are so bitter. Uh, and it, all, <laughs> it, it, it always stems from the fact that you lost the election, you came out third. W why do you think people claim that you are so bitter against President Sata and the PF you know, government? Um, well, how would you describe the kind of checks and balances that you and the UPND are giving the patriotic front? Costa, let me stick to your earlier question no. and connect it to just the question you've asked. The issue is that for us, what is paramount? We seek public office to take over public affairs management so we can manage these affairs, these resources properly so that we can generate value. And from that value generated, redistribute to those that need the support. Who are they? The children, in many ways, including education support. The sick that need medicines. Who else? The, those that live with disabilities in society. Every society has people who are impaired in one way or another. And ca Zambia cannot be an exception. And for us, Costa, that's what motivated us to seek public office. Now, in that arrangement, our colleagues in PF were simply focused on sharing positions and getting into government. That's not where we place a premium on as UPND, particularly as Hakainde. I don't place a premium on getting into government a lot, at all costs, and especially getting into government without a plan. And we, when we say to the people of Zambia that the PF went into government without a plan, everybody first laughed, Costa. Nobody laughs today because they've now seen through what we meant when we said the PF went into government without a plan. So no regrets at all. We've actually been vindicated. The contrary, we've been vindicated that our position was right. Although at that time, and it's normal, Costa, people did not quite respect or follow through the argument we made, that for us the premium was on the program of economic and social management of the country. Because that's the only reason anybody should seek public office in today's army. Why, so, why, so really why, there's no bitterness Why at all. and where do you think that this public perception of HH being bitter coming from? Because it, it keeps on coming. No, because earlier there was a perception made in the country, especially in our country, Zambia, and to some extent, Africa and the third world countries, the countries that are struggling to feed its, their people. There's a perception that uh, public office should be used as a means to achieving wealth. We don't see public office like that. We see it totally differently. It's actually an obligation to save the people based on the abilities, the skills, the knowledge, the experience. I'm, and I'm talking about relevant experience here. Because in the past, there have been arguments about uh, negative experience of those that have lived off politics, those that have lived off taxpayers as a, as a model, cost, as a yardstick for why everybody seeks public office. We don't seek public office on the basis of that criteria. Yeah. Absolutely not. And I think it took time for people to know that there's a group of people that are totally different. There's a group of people who think differently as to what public office means to them. And we now, over time, over, if I may say, assisted by the failures of the PF, people began to lend us an ear, or their ears. They began to lend us their attention to see that uh, you don't seek public office so you can be better financially. You seek public office so you can look after the vulnerable. But you cannot look after the vulnerable, Costa, without managing the country's economy efficiently, effectively, prudently.
And that's what so, UPND so, so, so for the stands sake, for. For the sake of those viewers tonight who still hold that perception, is HH a bitter man? Absolutely not. There's no reason one can be bitter. The issue is actually, for me, I thank God that he allowed the PF and Mr. Sutter to form government. Because, you know, God works in his own ways, as I said earlier on. If that didn't happen, this, this thirsty for the so-called man of action, for the so-called panacea to the solutions, the, the economic solutions, the social challenges that this country faced, the pressure would have continued Costa. But, you know, God, great as he is, he allowed the PF to come into office so that Zambians can begin to think twice and begin to place a premium on the choice of leadership in the country. Because politics is not a game. Politics, Costa, is not comedy. Politics is serious business. And I think this has allowed Zambians now to begin to think twice as to what type of leadership do they want. Do they want to continue with those who see themselves as professional politicians and who live off politics, taxpayers' money, when there are no medicines in hospitals? when the children are not sitting on desks in schools, and yet these politicians are looking wealthier and affluent out of abusing taxpayers' money. That is not the issue. And I think now people have realized, hey, UPN Dan Hagainde had a point, and that is good. It places us in a position where people are listening to us now, and they're beginning to examine the inabilities, the inadequacies of the party in office, the PF. Like I said in my preamble, there's this slogan now, the Alesa, Alesa. Probably in reference to you, uh, have you kicked off an early campaign? Any decent political party, Costa, is in a campaign mode all the time. Why? Because, first, if it's post-elections, you must perform your functions of providing genuine, credible, intelligent checks and balances to make sure that the party in office doesn't go into office to sleep. The PF, as I said, went into office without a plan. And we were able to expose that. At a point when we started doing it, post the 2011 elections, people brought in coin this issue of bitterness you're talking about. But over time, we began to show people, look at the price of milk, look at the cost of living. From the time the PF moved into office, a bag of millimeter, which is a step of food in our country, was 35 kwacha, basically 25 kg bag of millimeter. Today, within two years, just over two years of the PF in office, it's 70 kwacha in Lusaka, in distant places like Watoba in Western Province, like Chama, Chief Kambombo in Chama, it's selling well over 90 kwacha, 90, 95 kwacha. Now, this, this distinction, this, this change, this deterioration is causing a situation where people go to bed without decent meals in a day. So, now, it is so our in a job way you to show. agree that you've started yeah. an early campaign? We, as I said... Or you're always on campaign? <laughs> we're always on the campaign. It, it depends on what issues we're driving. If it's just post-elections, we will be driving issues that will hold the party in office accountable. And for us, we knew very, very clearly that uh, because we had peeped inside the PF's thinking and that there was actually nothing in terms of an economic and social program, we knew that within a short period of time, we will be able to demonstrate to the people of Zambia that they are worse off now than they were two and a half years ago. And it didn't take too long. That word of bitterness, Costa, disappeared and was replaced with a, a really clear distinction that we provided the hope for the betterment of this country's, you know, uh, management of public there, affairs. There are clear-cut public speculations and concerns hmm. have come out regarding President yeah. Michael Sata's well-being, his whereabouts, and that he's not been in public for some time now. What is your stance as HH and as a party? I know you said at one of the press briefings that you don't want to comment, but some parties are calling for an early by-elections. Others are calling for a medical board to review. Could this be part of the reason why we see enhanced aggression on your team? Well, first, Costa, this is a very, very important question you've raised. And it deserves, I think, an important answer. An answer that is clear and should not be confused after this program. To anyone listening to this program tonight, 
God is the giver of life. All of us are alive because God has continued to give us life. And we must thank him for that. God is the one that at some point decides that uh, we must go to another world. Not here. Only God. No one is closer to God in that respect, in terms of taking a decision, who lives on, who disappears. Now, Hagainde, UPND are not God. We're nowhere closer to God. And we will basically be dictated by the way things have happened generations after generations. So no one predicts anybody's death. No one equally should wish anyone dead. It is really the domain of our maker, the great one up there. But the issue here is that there are some quarters that would like to taint UPND by locking UPND into a corner. That corner, and I want to call it a messy corner, that has been created by the lack of leadership in the PF. Today, Costa, in this country, there is no leadership. Absolutely no leadership under the PF government. And this is one example where the PF has failed to demonstrate leadership. Why do I say so? If, for example, we were in government as UPND and Hagainde was president of Zambia, God's will, cutters of the people of Zambia. But, we always but, respect but, that. But, but President yeah. HH, yeah. I, I know we'll come to those things. And, yeah. and I'd want you to answer the questions as they come. Yeah. And I will, I will say it again. Yeah. There are concerns, clear concerns. Mm. We in the media have not had a chance to talk to President Sata in a while. Mm. Nareb says, let's have an interim government. Others are calling for a medical board, and we're told even the, the parliament, the, the opposition MPs, asked through Vice President Scott that they want to go to State House. Seriously, as, as one of the biggest opposition parties and, and one of the people who is considered a leading contender, mm -hmm. this is an issue that honestly is on your mind. Absolutely. And Zambia walked that road in 2008, where we lost a president. Yes. So surely... What is the stance of the UPND and HH on this matter that there are speculations regarding the president's whereabouts and his health? I think I know you've spoken about it diplomatically from a Christian and cultural background. But let's face facts. I was proceeding. Yeah. I was proceeding. Beyond what I've said, Costa, I have said that uh, the speculation is known. It is clear. When the president went to Israel, the vice president went to parliament and said the president was uh, on holiday in Israel. But you are aware that uh, some of the sections of the Israeli media, I'm sure you're aware, did report a different position. Now, the point I'm making is that because of the absence of leadership by the PF, which really is what UPND is trying to do, and I think it's doing it effectively, providing leadership in the absence of leadership from those in office. We are providing leadership from the opposition. And it's very evident. In today's Zambia, it's very evident. Now, why create a confusion, Costa? If we were in office, that's where I was going to, and Hakainde was president and fell ill, I expect my office, our office, a office for the people of Zambia, to simply say, HH is not well, and he's gone for medical treatment anywhere, or indeed he all is resting. Do you know what that would have done in this country? If that was the case, there would have been no speculation. So there's speculation because there's absence of leadership on straightforward and mundane things, Costa, such as the illness of somebody. Now, the anxiety that this creates is a situation where speculation grows by the day. And why would any decent leadership allow speculation to grow by the day? President Zuma was not well you know, after the election in South Africa. And his office announced that uh, President Zuma was not well. Have you made you know? attempts to, to, to speak to President Sata? Not at all. Mm -hmm. D this is not... Because if I did, Costa, mm -hmm. you know very well, I'll be misunderstood. Mm -hmm. Deliberately misunderstood. So, you know, we're slightly smarter than a lot of people think. We stay away from those issues so that we do not get accused as usual. Are you not concerned about we consent. the state right Definitely. regarding these speculations. If there's the absence of leadership, no decent leader like ourselves who leads a party, that is a part of choice in Zambia today, 
would not be concerned. What should we do as a nation through the PF and the government? The because PF, the president is still Nazi. The PF, first and foremost, cost number one, should simply do what is normal. Tell the Zambians the truth. Because they've not told any Zambian that the president is not well. So that's why Zambians are speculating. That's number one. And that's what I call leadership, if they came out clear on that matter. But who do you think in PF has got capacity to do that? At the moment, I don't see anybody. Secondly, there's a more serious concern, Costa. That is the gap in the leadership when people have no medicines in hospitals. No one is able to really talk about how to deal with that inadequacy. When people have no clean water in our country to drink, when we control 40% of fresh water in this, in this region, sadly, is in Zambia, but there's no clean drinking water, no one is talking about those issues. No one is talking about how to lower the cost of food, which is unaffordable to the majority of our people. We're concerned. And that's a greater concern. And that gap itself means that uh, people are suffering when they should not suffer. We, because the, the, the essence of leadership is to ameliorate, to reduce, to basically, if you like, help people get better in different areas. But there is no one doing that cost. That in the UPND is a worry for us. Really, what I can say is to challenge PF. You were seeking public office. You uh, got public uh, office. Apart from the you fact not that you're saying public they need to come out and tell the truth, yeah. others are calling for a medical board to, to review. Uh, others are calling for an interim, you know, caretaker government. What, what is your, your take on it, this? This issue will, will take its course. I want to say to you, Costa, my young friend, this debate will take its natural course. It cannot be sustained. Lack of clarity cannot continue forever. You know, in this, what is called in nature does not allow a vacuum. The vacuum is now obtaining. And that's why you see the confusion, you see. And the Bible is also clear. Where there's no leadership, the people perish. That is why you see confusion in our country now. But it's not just the issue of illness, Costa. And as, as you know, if the president, if the people in leadership had told us the president was unwell, we would be the first ones to issue, if you like, good wish messages to pray for the president. But we cannot do that because we've not been told if the president is, is well or is not well. But the issue I'm emphasizing here is that the PF is failing to provide leadership. The PF is a failed project in government. And this is just one example of these failures. There are numerous failures that you know. Constitution making, you know, Nazi situation, medicines in hospitals. The price of maize is really ridiculous. It doesn't make agriculture viable at the farm gate. I'm a farmer costa. And you don't understand what is going on with the PF leadership. The basic things, Costa, in my own language I define, mundane things, are not being attended to under the PF. And that's where the bigger crisis is eased at the moment. And we need to deal with that. And UPND is doing its best from the opposition to provide leadership. Before we Thank come you. to economic and, and yeah. social issues in the country, let's get to intra-party politics yeah. and, and, and drive into your party, the UPND. Like I said in my preamble, you took over the UPND from the late, you know, Anderson, Campbell, mm. Amazoka, may his soul rest in peace. 2006, sure. Sure. you citizen. contested an election in 2008 and in 2011. You have lost three elections. Uh, why do you continue to cling on to the presidency? Is, 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 are some of the questions that people are asking, is UPND a party for HH in his pocket? Not at all. <laughs> U, U, UPND is a party for all the people of Zambia. Mm. And everybody is free to aspire for leadership. But you must also deal with one aspect here. Mm. Uh, UPND offers a clear vision, distinct mm. from the, that of the PF. I'm not sure of the PF vision, to be honest. I'm, I, I'm yet to see a Zambian who can say, I'm clear of the PF vision. But how do I'm you describe, uh, describe the, the, the democracy, the intra-party democracy in the UPND? Abundantly clear. Mm. Costa, I did not get into the UPND leadership by a coup, mm. but by an in intra-party democratic elections. I won the elections by over 70% of the vote, and the contenders were three. I was the third one. There were two other contenders, 
And people forget that. And the party goes through these processes which are normal. And you can see the way the party runs today. We're quite organized in the UPND. If you look at the disorganization in PF, and then you compare to how UPND runs, I don't know if you have a basis for comparison. So really, but after losing three elections, democracy. does the party still have confidence in you? What what do you have to say regarding conventions and really reaffirming your mantle and authority at the helm of the UPND? If after the, losing three, if elections. there's any party cost mm. that is intact today, mm. it's a UPND, and it's out of providing leadership that the party is in that state. It's not out of chance. It's out of an orchestrated leadership process, management processes. And that's really what we bring to the table, Costa. That's what we want to bring to governance of this country. But you again, uh, uh, you, you keep yeah. on going to the aspect of what you want to offer. Mm. How legitimate is your presidency within the UPND? Costa, it's very easy. Yeah. If there was an issue of legitimacy, mm -hmm. I wouldn't be sitting in the, as president of UPND. Mm -hmm. Maybe that settles the matter. Exactly. But, because the but, people but, have but, a democratic but, right but to My it. question is, mm. do the people still have the confidence despite you losing them three elections? Well, Costa, <laughs> the president of today has lost, lost how many elections? Well, he, he claimed his, his mentor on that was Abdullah Iwad. No. So are you going down the same route? You lose <laughs> not, nine not, elections? Not, not at all. Also, Costa, you must contextualize this question mm. you're raising. Eh? I came through into the UPND... Mm. And 45 days later, after winning intra-party elections to be president, I went for an election, a general election. Don't forget that. So for me, really, the true election that I faced, the genuine election, was 2011. Because I was only there for a five-year period. I actually consider myself unfortunate. Uh, but mm -hmm. that's how God works. Eh? Mm -hmm. He puts you through a mill. I consider this as a mill. You know, in the, um, within a five-year period, Costa, I had three elections. Is that normal? Absolutely not. 2006, 45 days after winning the inter-party elections, I was through a general election, out of the demise of our president. May so rest in peace. 2008, unfortunately, another demise then of the sitting president. Very, very unusual. We went through an election. So 2006, 2008, two years later. Hmm? Then the, the five-year window, for which really I consider a genuine election for me, was 2011. So you can contextualize this argument. But it's neither here nor there. If the UPND rank and file were unhappy about UPND, it's pretty easy. Well, well, well in, in, in Zambian African mm -hmm. politics, you, you see people not really talking. Out. But so much has happened in terms of transforming... Why the should they not talk? <laughs> Well, from a media perspective, African politics are like that. But, but so much has happened in terms of the UPND transformation. Hmm. Lots of people defecting to the party, joining, and so on and so forth. Will you take your party to a convention just to strengthen the mandate that you are the right candidate come 2016? Absolutely, Costa. We have absolutely no issue about that. Let, first, I want to use your own words. Hmm to show that the people, the rank and file in the UPND ought to be happy with the leadership of the UPND. Why is it that today, when PF has only been in office less than three years, people are not rushing to join PF? They are rushing to join UPND. UPND today is a part of choice. One has to ask that question. I think they've seen something in what first UPND offers in terms of what Zambia needs emancipation from poverty, economic management. Number two, they have seen, I think, stable and decent leadership. And that, obviously, you can't take it away from the team of leaders. And it's not just Haka India. UPND has a team of leaders. You know, I have two vice presidents, I have a chairperson, national chairperson, I have a secretary general, I have a NEC, I have NMC, all the lower ranks. So the point I'm making to you, Costa, is that Today, the UPND is a part of choice. People are joining every single is day. Is the UPND going to a convention before 2016? UPND will go through a convention, Costa. The first thing we are doing is to grow the party. Mm. Because if you don't grow the party, Costa, let me tell you my, my own concern as an individual. You elect the same people because the pool is limited. So I'm glad that the pool is growing. And there can never be a shortage of leadership in a party such as UPND. Because our job is to grow the pool of electable, 
quality, quality leaders that can begin to bring distance to political management, through which you bring distance and seriousness to public affairs management when you form government. Reorganizing your yeah. party again, uh, coming into 2016, you cannot avoid this because it has always been thrown at you. But I know you don't like it, I will still throw it at you. <laughs> How are you working yeah. towards removing the so-called tribal tag against you and the UPND? It's not me, but it's always thrown at you. It, it, Costa, is a non-issue. Yeah. It's a matter that I'm completely relaxed about it. Completely relaxed about <laughs> it. First and foremost, UPND is the most representative party of the regions of Zambia today. Let me give you five positions in the UPND. That's the first point. I come from a different part, as president, I come from a different part of uh, Zambia. You know, I don't even like calling myself a president. I call myself a community worker, Costa. Because we've got to make it clear in our minds that this presidency is service to the people. So I come from one part of Zambia. I have two vice presidents. One of them is uh, Richard Capita, who comes from northwestern province. If you say I originate from the southern, let's put it that way. Richard Capita originates from another region, northwestern province. My second vice president, Dr. Kanishas Banda, originates from the eastern province. Three, three positions, three provinces. National chairperson of the party hails from northern province, Kaputa, Mutalena Rumango. Fifth, National Secretary, hails from Central Province. Five top positions, Costa. Yeah. With, with five that, regions. With so, that said, uh, Mr. President, let yeah. me just add a question yeah. onto that. As, mm. as, as, as you explain, mm. yes, your, your, your next structure is like that. Mm. Analysts and, and, and political experts in, in past elections, nothing mm. to do with the UPN, mm. but, but analysts said Zambia and its elections is largely voted or is dominant on regional lines. And so as experts and, 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 and architects within political parties begin to plan, they know southern provinces are UPND-dominated you know, mm. areas. So mm. where do we have our inroads? And this is why I'm asking my question, how are you transforming the UPND to remove that tag and also for you to gain in areas that have been seemingly deemed non-UPND areas? For example, Luapula, northern province. How are you doing in those areas? Facts first mm. matter, mm. Costa. Mm. Because you cannot argue with facts. Mm. That's why I'm giving you the structure of the leadership of our party. And uh, we have national management committee members from <laughs> all the provinces of Zambia. And I'm very proud community worker leading a team of the UPND leaders in this country. Extremely proud. Extremely proud. The second aspect I want to demonstrate to you is that UPND has councillors and members of parliament from all the provinces of Zambia. You can check, check the facts. We have councillors and MPs across the country. Thirdly, you have seen new members. Basically, we have pushed the doors of the UPND wider and wider to bring in people, to accommodate people who are coming in from Luapula. I'm sure you are aware. I don't want to okay. mention but, names. But, but you've mentioned facts. Yeah. Would you agree to those uh, analysts who say mm. that voting... Nothing again against the UPND, but in the last few elections, the voting pattern has been along regional lines. There was a perception, Costa, a wrong perception driven particularly by the PF that uh, regional vote is equivalent to delivering government. We've broken that thinking. Because first, the PF assumed that a regional vote will allow them to deliver in government. They've fallen flat on that. Cannot be an issue anymore. And I think the facts are very clear. And today I've told many Zambians, and I've said it several times, that you cannot vote in somebody on the basis of ethnicity, on the basis of uh, speaking the same language, because it doesn't equate to your welfare improving completely. Today I've said to people, there is no shop where the PF members those who are shouting power to power to more money in the pocket, where they buy millimen, which is a lower price millimen than the rest of citizens. Everybody buys millimen at an affordable price because of the poor agricultural policies mm. of the PF. So what is now happening? Remember earlier I said that God is great. He allowed the PF with its extremism, its lies, its lack of a program of running a country to go into government. Maybe you may say, with its appeal, 
ethnic appeal. Remember that mm. the Secretary General, Winter Kabimba of the PF, it's in black and white in one of the post editions said the PF is the most tribal party. The PF is most indisciplined party. I think you are aware of that. The Secretary General says it. Who should debate that? But for me, I'm not too concerned about that issue because I'm concerned about the value and the benefit of allowing God allowing PF to go in and failing and then allowing now Zambians to be a bit objective. In strengthening yeah. your yeah. party and this mm. national character that you, you, you're yeah. trying to build, reliable sources say you are courting former defense minister mm. GBM. How <laughs> true is that? Costa. To join your party? Costa. We're courting everybody. Are you courting GBM? We're courting everybody. Are you courting GBM? We're courting everybody. So it's a yes? We're courting everybody. Let is, me, is, is, is GBM a political factor for you and the UPND? We're courting everybody, and even if we're not courting anybody, Costa, mm -hmm. people have realized that UPND is a platform around which to galvanize citizens of Zambia. And to some extent, residents and those who live and do business in Zambia. Mm -hmm. It is a decision Zambians have, been, have made for themselves, having analyzed the political matter. Mr. Market. President, I deem yeah. an answer from yeah. Rumors are there that you're courting GBM to be vice president in the UPN. That is uh, not is true. Is that true? That is not true. We are courting anybody and everybody. I, I need who, a straight answer. Is the UPN said is not courting true. GBM? I said, I said we're courting everybody, Costa. Mm -hmm. We're not courting GBM to be vice president. But you're we're courting, not courting everybody. Look, in UPND, the way we do things, mm -hmm. eh? first people see the UPND for its inherent value. What is inherent value? Mm -hmm. What it offers to the people of Zambia. The vision, especially the economic management. Because UPND today's obligation is to deliver economic management superior programs. That, that is unquestionable. <laughs> and yes, from yes. there, hang on, because yeah. hang on, just allow me a little bit. Yeah. So on the basis of that, we are courting Zambians to see UPND as their party. And that there are 14 million bedrooms in the UPND for every Zambian who wishes to be a member of the UPND. Not because Hakainde has big ears, but because of what we offer mm. in terms of superior quality leadership that will help manage the country's public affairs, including resources so that we can generate jobs from there. We can do the things that come out of managing the economy better, which has been the failure of the PF, and to some extent, governments before that. One so, last question yeah. before we move now to yeah. the state of mm. the, the economy. Mm -hmm. I want to take this opportunity mm -hmm. for, for you through this program to really explain to the millions watching out there, mm. truthfully, who Haka Inde is and how you amassed your wealth. Because again, Mud has been thrown at you. The president himself, we've been told your ranches have been flown over. The president has mocked you in the public place to say you speak on behalf, you claim to be speaking on behalf of the poor, yet you own probably half of the country in terms of wealth. You heard the president say that. You stole funds through privatization. Who is HH? How did you amass your wealth? Are you a humble citizen and one who is ready to serve the people of Zambia? Costa. I'm just a simple villager. I'm a guy who comes from the floor. And I'm very proud of that. Every Zambian should be proud of their heritage. I come from the floor, went to a village school, Costa, and went to secondary school within the area where chose, God chose that I be born. Very happy and proud of that. Every Zambian should be proud of their heritage. I've said that already. Because that's given by God. No one chooses which parents you should be born out of, which language you should speak. And there's no, by the, by the way, Kosa, there's no minority tribe in this country. There's no minority ethnic group. All of them are equal. And I emphasize this issue. So I then went after my secondary school, Costa, all in public schools, eh? no private school. By the way, before the school level, I was born in a grass thatched house not in a maternity wing of a hospital or a clinic. In a village, we drew water from a shallow well, walked to school, Costa, barefoot, basically, walked to school. And this is the reason why I'm very passionate about education, so that no other children, whether they're orphans or not, should go through what we went through. Costa, I went to University of Zambia 
to study economics and business on a government scholarship. Hey, who are we that we seek public office and are not willing to offer education to that child from a compound? Or that child who is a double orphan, mother and father are dead? Who are we? Then there's something wrong with us because we actually ought to make it easier for the children to acquire skills than it was for us. So Costa from there did many things, many, many things. I bought my first plot, Costa, to construct a house which I could afford at the time. Not far from where we're seated, Kalingalinga. You know where Kalingalinga is. Very near your studio here. My second salary, I bought a plot. I could not afford a bricklayer with a team of builders or helpers. I was, uh, in Zambia, we call it Daka boy. I was the one pushing the wheelbarrow. Built our first house. Couldn't complete it, sold it at a profit, bought another plot, built, couldn't complete it, Costa. And then I was innovative. Entrepreneurship comes from our, our heritage, cattle keeping. Eh? We, you can say I was born in a cattle crowd. And, and, and I think that's where the business training came from. Later on, it was just to add on. Costa, from there on, I couldn't complete this house. By the way, when I was building Kalingalinga, my fellow classmates from university were laughing at me that I was building a house in the compound. I didn't see why anybody would laugh at me because I was building a house. They weren't. I was already better. And I had nothing to lose. So this culture caused the where people place themselves where they don't belong is actually wrong. So I went to a company then, those days, and I told them I was going out for studies eh, for a couple of years in Europe, in, in UK to be specific. And I said to the guys, look, I can't complete this house. Complete it for me. One year you don't pay rent. I went away. Cost of the house was completed. When I came back, there was rent in my bank account. After a year. The rest is history. We've worked for ourselves, Costa. We've come from the floor. I'm a grassroots person. I'm just a simple villager. So, 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 where so do, there's nothing... Where, where do all these allegations and, and, and clamor come from? Because there is a picture painted that, mm. that something dubious along the way or something irregular or unethical was done by HH and group and this is how this group of young techs who are now you know, financially powerful want now to take over the reins of politics and this country's leadership. <laughs> There's still that grey area <laughs> that even the likes of the president say can he explain just how he's one of the top rich guys in this country with ranches that are always flown over to show as an example to the Zambians. Costa, our situation, mm. my situation must be used positively. Mm. It must not be used to ridicule Hakainde. First, the president was out of order and I challenged him that I'm not a thief. I have no thieving mind in my blood or thread or iota of a thieving culture in my blood. I actually I challenged the president. I said, Mr. President, if you have a thieving culture, I don't have. And you know this president we're talking about. If I had stolen anything, you know the other time he said I stole cattle, and I simply said to him, Mr. President, cattle are not like rats. Cattle have owners, right? Human beings who own them. If you steal cattle, you get arrested. In the event you think I stole cattle, why you are the president? Why don't you instruct the police? You love arresting me. To anyway. settle this matter for the yeah. sake of the millions yeah. watching. Yes. Again, I want to take this opportunity yes. to, for you to explain to them. Who are you and this wealth? How has it come off? Would you Costa. declare tonight to the Zambians to say, this is what I own and this is how I've owned it? Well, look, first, the president was being malicious, mm. to be honest. Mm. He was um, abusing a citizen called Hakainde. And he got away with it because the only response he got was, Mr. President, if you think I stole anything, hey, get me into court or detain me. After all, I'm used to being detained by him on flimsy charges. He didn't detain me on that. I can assure you, if I had stolen anything, Costa, I wouldn't be talking to you tonight in this studio. I'll be languishing in cells, cells which have no water, as he has thrown me in cells several times without electricity, without food, with fecal matter. But that's a by, by the way issue. It's, it's a, this, this, this is the stench in African politics we want to get rid of. 
to use the president to demean citizens who actually should be used as good examples to motivate the young people. This is what we would like to do, to take out this vindictiveness, to draw the line, to say, this is not how you run a country when you are given an opportunity to do that. You should actually try and manage the country differently. Manage the country in a professional manner. President H.H., yeah? I, I want to go to the text messages yeah. in putting this matter to rest because yeah. you are in a political ring where your opponents are seemingly glaring or throwing mud about you about something they believe is not right about you. Mm. For the sake of a Zambian watching out there who probably wants to put a vote on you, how do you convince them that there's something or everything right about you against these allegations? Cost. <laughs> the easiest way is to say, if I was a thief under this president leader, mm. president leader, president leader, president leader, I'm using them synonymous, deliberate, eh? where I get detained even for appearing on a program like this, after this you know, interview, I know I can be detained. Why has he failed to detain me for his assumption of me having stolen anything? I've challenged him. I've challenged the PF government, and they've fallen flat on this. That should prove to you that there's nothing wrong we've done. Because if there was anything wrong we, we, would have, we, we had done, they would have jumped on it because they have appetite to lock people like me up. So yeah. uh, hang on, just yeah. hang on, Costa, yeah. a little bit. So Zambians must know that um, hard work pays, Costa, opportunity. First opportunity I got, you should ask me the question. Is education. I told you I went to school on a government scholarship. That was, that was for me, that, that was it. And I wasn't looking for any inheritance from anyone. That was enough. Education I call Costa the best equalizer, the best inheritance. And that's why we owe it to our children. From there on, I got a job. Hmm? I wrote my exam, final exam here in this university nearby here. On a Friday, Costa, on a Monday, I had a full time job. Opportunity, which is not available to our youth today under the PF leadership. Even if they were promised more jobs, there are no jobs. Absolutely none. I'm talking of real jobs. I'm not talking of pushing wheelbarrow to move garbage at a street corner, which PF defines. Lots jobs, of people have right? criticized the privatization yeah. process in this country, especially the mind. It's also yeah. from there that we are told you were involved. As, as valuator within mm. the valuation of some of these mines. Um, what is your take? Do you, do you feel that you, you are part to blame in, in, in the bad decisions and obviously the, the raw deals that this country got out of privatization of the mines? People now have, have stood on mountains and blown trumpets regarding KCM cells, Luansha Copper Mines and others. Do you feel part to the blame? Costa, how can one blame Hakainde? Mm. I've never been in government. The privatization program was a MMD government program. How can Hakainde be responsible for a government program when he's outside government? How powerful is this fellow called HH that he could be basically dictating a government program from outside? He doesn't work with like that, especially under the African leaders we've seen in the past who actually are excessively greedy. And that's what we want to heal when we get into office. And, and believe me, we will do it. There was no way that one can say Hakainde is responsible for the privatization program in this country. It was the MMD government. Who was in the MMD government, Costa? Have you ever asked that question? The, minister, the ministers in the MMD government, the cabinet of the MMD that decided on the privatization program included just a few examples. Mr. Michael Sutter who was the minister without portfolio in the MMD government. He's the one who decided on the, M the privatization program. Next, then minister of agriculture. Who is it? Dr. Guy Scott, who is today is the vice president of Zambia. He was in that cabinet. What was hang on, your hang on, hang What on. was your uh, despite, on, despite not being part of government? <laughs> hang on, my friend. Mm. Eh? Mm. Let's use today's platform to clear issues mm. that are used to ridicule Hakainde. Because of pertness. And you're being given right? a chance on this platform. Exactly. So, second minister, 
of agriculture who sat in that cabinet to decide on the privatization program, Kai Scott, who today is the vice president of Zambia? Who is the other minister? Or who is the other key player? The minister of finance, Alexander Chikwanda, was the chief of staff in State House under the MMD. They probably would have been the one advising President Chiluba, the late Chiluba, may so rest in peace. How can Hakainde be more powerful than all these men who today are masquerading as not responsible for the privatization? Like privatized you said, let's use this platform to clear exactly. these issues. What was exactly. your role? So I think I've convinced you and the viewers. Well, it's not me, it's the viewers. But what was viewers, your role? And what the viewers, was your role? Absolutely. Yeah. And the viewers, Costa, mm. that uh, it wasn't my domain. Mm. I was just a young professional doing my job. Here is my role. Mm. I ran a firm called Coopers and Librand, international firm of basically advisors. And we bid to do various pieces of work, sometimes for clients, sometimes for whoever wanted. For example, Costa, if you are selling your house or you're selling your farm and you come to Againde to say, Againde, I want your firm to bid so that you can do me an asset verification. Hmm? That's the job, an asset verification. And I bid my firm, which I was running, and I win the tender. We negotiate the contract, you sign the contract. In that contract includes deliverables that I'll do an asset verification for you. That's what I'm training, I'm trained to do. I'm proud of that. Then you agree the fees. No one is in prison. It's business. Is it true on, that, that, that you undervalued these hang on. assets Costa. to deprive the Zambians of what is due to Absolutely not true. Mm. That's malice. Malice of the same people who sat in the cabinet, like President Sata, Guy Scott, and the Chief of Staff, Chikwanda, who sat in that cabinet. That's malice. What is your comment yeah, on the low on. amounts that I mean, Ramco's bought to Wansha Mines, that the I'm low amounts that Inchanga was bought for? What is your take as, as an expert in asset I'm, verification? I can tell you that there was no competence in the government to negotiate deals good for Zambia. The government, because they were the sellers. Hakainde was not a seller. I was never a seller. Now, let me you complete, were on the other side of the me, negotiation. Let me complete the example I gave you. Mm. And then I do an asset verification for you. And you want to use that asset verification to negotiate with a buyer. I hope you're following. I give you my report of your asset verification you pay me my fees. Hey, thank you for paying my fees. That's what I was trained to do. You go ahead and sell your farm or sell your, your company. You sell your assets. I've given you my report of the asset verification. Then you go and negotiate a bad deal. Then tomorrow you come back to me and say, Hakainde, you cheated me. How did I cheat you? You have no capacity. You had no capacity to negotiate. You thought you had capacity. You didn't have capacity. Because most politicians in this country and in Africa, they overvalue themselves. They don't even seek professional advice. Look at how the PF runs the country today. No professional understanding of how to run agriculture. And that's why the price of food has increased. No professional understanding of how to run basically certain policies such as monetary policy. Which example am I giving you? Statutory Instrument 33, which the PF cabinet, and 20 years later, Costa, let me remind you, some of the members of the cabinet in PF today who introduced a statutory instrument 33, which effectively was flawed, and ask me how it was flawed, in an import-dependent economy, you close out foreign exchange inflow routes. That was the effect of statutory instrument 33. And then tomorrow, you want to have a dollar to import your daily requirements. Fuel. Hmm? Machinery. Tractor. What do you do? You kill the quacha, you kill the currency. You damage the, the, basically the economy. And you are told, then you don't listen. This is what's happening in the PF today. And this is what UPND wants to fix. Mm -hmm. They want to, Now, the point I've given you, the example I've given you, Costa, I have demonstrated to you today that it was never in my remit. It was never my power to privatize anything. By the way, I is, did not is, value is, any mind. Is Haka hmm? the coming to the people of Zambia a clean man? Absolutely. And people have now understood that a lot of mud was thrown at Haka Inde. 
Costa. And uh, Againde had no opportunity to basically explain himself. And I'm very grateful that you, you are asking these questions over and over. And Zambians have now basically made a judgment that Againde is a humble creature who first worked for himself. And that's the way I view public office, Costa. First work for yourself and your children so that when you come to seek public office, you can now work for the children of the 14 million Zambians. For the viewers who, who, who have just been joining yeah. us or who have mm. just joined us, we are talking State of the Nation. My guest, the yeah. UPND president, uh, Haka in the Hichilama. Let's quickly, director, get into the inbox and get some... Um, Facebook, uh, you know, messages, tweets, as well as uh, SMSs. On the other side of that, we'll be looking at the economic state of the nation. Among mm. them, the foreign mm. exchange rate, mm. uh, the agriculture, mining, yeah. as well as uh, tourism sector mm. director. If we are ready with those uh, questions and contributions this evening, Costa, you are really a man of integrity. You have brought a man, HH, to tell the nation that the uh, the truth. Our copper is wasted. PF is watching, waiting. Borrow money. What kind of government is this? PF must go. We need fresh guys. Mujende in uh, Livingston. H8, what are your plans for retirees? Don't talk about the past. 2016 is yours. That is FO in Indola. Mr. HH is president in waiting 2016. What plans do you have for council employees who are on the government of the Republic of Zambia grant for salaries, unlike teachers on GRZ payroll for 50 years? Mm. If voted into power, what good things are you promising the unemployed Zambian um, youth? What is your position on the fired recently employed youth in Western Province and the 500 plus fired nurses in Lusaka and Livingston? Do you support salary increment for MPs? What is your plan on education once in government? We are tired of lies. Please save us, HH. We are behind you, Alesa, Alesa. I think that is uh, merely... Uh, a comment, Hope HH means hospitals and happiness, not hunger and humiliation. <laughs> Wish you <laughs> good luck. <laughs> Mr. President, you are the man of the moment. Save us from this corrupt PF that is from Proud. I'm sure that is from Garden Compound. Mr. President, as much as most of us are behind you, what plans do you have for the youth in terms of employment? And now that everyone is looking for job experience, where do we get it if we are not employed? That is coming through from uh, CS. Mr. President, comment on MPs advocating for high perks and how do you intend to deal with unemployment and the wage freeze? What is your view on the Barotsi Agreement? Are you going to let Western Province secede? Mr. HH, how are you going to handle labor matters because there is too much corruption in labor office? Zambians are just working Indians with low, uh, working for Indians with low salaries. Director, let's get two more. Uh, Mr. President, looking good, what will your party do to address the impasse, the impasse rather, surrounding our constitution-making process? That is P.P. Chilulu in Lusaka. Let's get one more. H.H. comment on the PF government. They have allegedly installed Kabila Moses as Chief Kasoma Bangwell instead of... Uh, uh, let's, get, let's get that last one on, 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 on uh, the chief, uh, the chieftain's installation director, if we may. Um, are we able to get that? Yeah. What is your comment on Chitimukulu impasse? That is DK in Kitwe. I think there was another one on Moses something. Yeah, I've, but, I've, but, taken, well, I've taken the, note the, of it. There are quite a number of, of, of SMSs yes. um, here, others on the constitution, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. What I would want us to do is you quickly respond to most of these so that yeah. I can zero in my, my, my yeah. interview into the direction where we want to take it from the economic state of the nation. Absolutely. So quickly we can answer the, the, the viewers Absolutely. this evening. I'll, I'll get some uh, cost. Eh? Let me start from bottom up. Eh? Yeah. Last in, first out. Principle. Chitimukulu uh, Impas. We have said it very clearly. We in the UPND recognize Mr. Sosala as a duly elected paramount chief Chitimukulu of our Bemba people in northern Zambia. We have said it very, very clearly once, twice, three, four, five times. And we say it again. We as a policy in UPND will not interfere with the selection process of the chiefs or indeed headmen. I hope, Costa, you are aware that I'm a headman, a senior headman for that matter, in the village. Because that's a domain of the traditional leadership. And in this case, Vashilu Bemba made their decision. And the present government, the PF government, and Mr. Sada, who should understand 
these issues more than many of us should not interfere in this process. And I think we will want to see as UPND traditional leaders as partners in development, to work with them genuinely, let whoever they select to be the chief, and the government's job for us in the UPND is to accept and work with such a chief. Otherwise, it becomes a problem, as it is, where the PF is ridiculing chiefs. There's an issue of Chief Kasoma. I think these are tied in. I mean, why would you install one chief, the other one you are rejecting? Where do you get the power to do that? These chiefs are born chiefs. We seek leadership through elections. Them is hereditary. Different. Um, uh, ju just as a follow-up, yes. um, on the issue of chiefs, yes. uh, again, we don't know how true this is, but yes. on the road to making of the constitution, yes. there was an issue raised that uh, the, the, the powers vested in the chiefs over traditional land was being taken away from them. Your take? I think the constitution, uh, Costa, should deal with those issues. Mm. For us in UPND, and I want to take this opportunity to answer these questions, applying the UPND views and policies. And I think that's the best way of dealing with them, because trying to follow what PF does, one will just get more confused. So the issue here is that land ought to be available to Zambian citizens and to be available in a proper manner, properly zoned for development, residential, commercial, farming, etc., etc. Let's take more questions okay? from the SMS. So the Constitution should deal with this matter. Thank you. Let's, let's take more questions. Now, more, more, more there was an issue on the Constitution, what UPND will do. Mm -hmm. UPND position is that the constitution has been debated sufficiently. We have lost a lot of money in our own calculation cost, over a billion uh, kwacha, not a billion, a trillion kwacha. Today's money, a billion. Hmm? Old money, three zeros out, basically with three zeros, a trillion. Mm -hmm. From the Mvunga Commission of Inquiry, Mwanakatwe Commission of Inquiry, Mungomba Commission of Inquiry, I'm talking of the costs, the NCC, and the Levy Manawasa may so rest in peace. And now the technical committee, or the committee of experts on the constitution by President Sada, the country has bled so much money. We need to generate value out of it. We need the constitution delivered to the people of Zambia before the 2016 elections. Many Zambians and, you know, are now saying through CSO, the church, yeah. and NGOs, hmm. that Zambia will not ever see a politician, not even HH and the UPND, that will ever deliver a constitution. That is, I can understand the concern, Costa. And we're getting to serious issues now. I can understand their concern because they've been cheated over and over. But the question is that it's the same politicians who have been cheating them over and over. In 1996, after the Mwanakatwe Commission, it is the present crop of PF leaders who were key ministers in the MMD government that rejected the Mwanakatwe report and would have had a constitution before the 1996 elections. Who was there? President Sata in the MMD. Guy Scott and others. They basically failed the people of Zambia. Today, they are the same people failing the people of Zambia. And Zambians must learn a lesson. Zambians must learn a lesson that you cannot be electing the same type of leaders who try and change their shirts, but remain inside the same people. And that's where we have a crisis of leadership. So the, the constitutional you, issue... You, you stand in very difficult shoes. Why should Zambians trust you? After where they are, we are the not. PF. We are not part of the same leaders. They've been recycled. We are part of the same cloth as uh, in the tag of politicians. Absolutely not. <laughs> in the tag of the name politicians, because the Zambians are saying we cannot trust any politician. Even your own politician, last GP was on this platform saying, Costa, no, don't trust any of us. Well, I wouldn't say that. Mm. I would say don't trust the same people we've been recycling, over and over, wearing different jackets, a crocodile Costa taken out of the Kafue River into Wapula River, remains a crocodile. That's what we've had. Same people over and over. Albert Einstein, a scientist, renowned scientist, says you cannot expect different results, yet you are going through the same process over and over. This is the failure, this is the crisis we want to clean out ourselves. We cut from a different cloth. We're what, not seeking... What, what, what would you say about some of your former members that went into the PF, the likes of the Given Luindas and others, they were in the UPND. They, 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 they came from UP, ULP. They, they were part of UPND. They need you, to answer those questions. You, you, you've got some MPs that have been over decades 
in Parliament under the UPND, and the Constitution has equally failed at that level. Let's stick to the issue, Costa. Mm, the Constitution. We would like mm. to. We would like the PF to deliver the Constitution mm. before the 2016 elections. It is one of their key campaign promises, and they say that they will deliver the Constitution in 90 days. According to the PF clock, we haven't passed the 90-day angle or position. The Zambian clock and the world clock, the, the, the natural clock, we've done almost three years. PF has failed. They lied. They used this subject to win votes, but never intended to deliver the constitution. Now, for us, we're saying release the draft constitution, because today Kabemba is debating it in one form or another. The other day he says, no, I'm presenting to the president. The other day he says, no, cabinet hasn't discussed it. Total confusion. Another example. Remember, I was talking of absence of leadership, lack of leadership. Here's another example that the PF has failed to provide leadership in the constitution-making process. Yet we've lost time, and time is an important factor, Costa, in any meaningful development process. It's an asset. But PF doesn't, don't see time as an asset. Just a little one, a very, very quick one, because this is very important. Secondly, we've lost so much money. So we want a draft constitution released like yesterday. What is the way forward? If Zambians are release from the your perspective, how, how do we get the PF to release? Because there have been green ribbons, there's been honking called for, there's been all sorts of pressure that are being called for. In your thinking or in your context as mm. UPND and HH, yeah. how do we get the PF to give the Zambians a draft? A decent leadership cost that does not need citizens to throw stones for them to get their constitution. But you can ask whether PF has decent leadership or not. It's a different question. But the way they are behaving, having promised the people that in 90 days they'll deliver the constitution and they failed, it means they lied to the people of Zambia. UPND is not in that business of lying to the people of Zambia. So, as I said, we need a draft release like yesterday. We need to get a definitive roadmap. Definitive meaning that there's an end, end point. Mm -hmm. right? We need to make this process legal. Allow and me to touch, on, to touch yeah. on some of the questions that were yeah. in the SMS. Yes. Are you, as Haga India and the UPND, mm. merely just sitting as armchair critics and condemning everything that the Patriotic Front government does wrong? Allow me to zero in on mm. one, two things. Mm. They've accrued debt through the Eurobond twice. Mm -hmm. They have... Three, three times. They're going to three times now. Th mm. They have... Mm. rebased the currency and seen the quacha perform to its worst yeah. in history. Mm -hmm. and, and, and these are facts and statistics. And nobody needs mm. to shout louder that the economy is not performing so well. Mm -hmm. Rather than you emphasizing that failure tonight, mm -hmm. how does Zambia get out of this through the eyes of the UPND? This is what we should have spent more time, Costa, tonight. This is the distinguishing factor that UPND brings to the table. This is the, the different selling pro proposition that UPND brings to the country. That's the value that we're looking at. But let me get into that, but conclude on the constitution. We need our constitution. The PF doesn't deliver the constitution. They will fail the people of Zambia, and they will be punished at the vote. We in the UPND are committed to delivering the constitution. Suffice the views that people may hold, because we believe that the work has been done, sufficiently done. Zambian has spoken. They've spoken on a majoritarian system, 50% plus one, necessary presidential running mate to avoid potential presidential by-elections cost. We need to do that. And it's a cost-effective measure because you can lose $300 million on a presidential by-election. As we could have lost before, the quantums are there. We don't need to continue making the same mistake over and over. We also, Zambians have agreed that they want separation of powers. Parliament, judiciary, executive. Executive has too much power today. Zambians have also agreed they want an independent electoral commission to free and fair elections. And all that is deliverable. Why the PF is dragging their feet? Only, you know, the devil knows. I don't want to say God. I want to say the devil knows. So let me come to the issues now. The economy is a, one of the biggest failures of PF. Rebasing. Let me pick a few themes you've, 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 you've covered, Costa. You know when PF was rebasing, I criticized that myself. And a lot of people, as usual, 
jumped on to say HH is bitter. The PF went into the rebasing exercise on the assumption cost that they will improve the value of the kwacha. Wrong thinking. The value, the inherent value of the currency cost is not in the picture you print on the new note. The new note is just a piece of paper. Currency cost is just a piece of paper like this, which you print, you know, coat of arms this side, something else, and then you put a value, 100 kwacha. That's not the value. The value lies, the intrinsic value lies in the performance of the economy. And again, that's what PF failed to, to understand. And it actually amazes me that you have a party in office that has no basic understanding of the economic management. And I, one asked the question, what is happening to those people sitting in the paper? Maybe it's because they went into office without a plan and without intention to run the country better, but to share contracts, to privatize hmm, taxpayers' money and call themselves businessmen. They're not businessmen. They're abusing resources of the country. Now, the value of the currency lies in economic, effective, efficient, prudent economic management. That's where that piece of paper reflects the true value. But the PF got it wrong. We ended up printing money and paid actual cash, US dollars, for those papers. Some of them are fading very quickly, but really, the real inherent I, value I is I want not you there. tonight to drive yeah? into, into the solutions and Zambians, Zambia's hope. The PF have, have defended themselves. External pressure on the international market, the, the falling copper prices, and obviously they've tried to reverse a couple of SIs, the SI-89, the <laughs> SI-55, and the SI-33, saying they are a listening government. Again, I ask you, yes, the Kwacha now is hovering at 6.2, 6.1. Do we ever see it coming down to levels of 5? If, if so, how would you do it in the eyes of the UPN? Uh, f first, Costa, you're throwing a couple of things that yes. are not necessarily the one and the same. Eh? Mm. Um, the PF first introduced a policy. Mm. And when they've seen the damage caused by that policy, they reverse the policy. That is thinking upside down. You don't run a country like that. For UPND, we've thought through the policies first. Let's talk of monetary policy, because that's where the SIs come from mainly, the ones you're talking about, SI-33, SI-55, part of monetary policy instruments. They did not think through about the implications of those policy instruments before they introduced them. And they had to wait until the damage was done to the kwacha. But we told them. They didn't listen to us. We in the UPN did a different and opposite way of doing things. We we'll think through that because we would have never introduced that SI-33 policy instrument. Why? Because we knew that you cannot close out foreign exchange inflow routes in an import-dependent economy. What is the way to strengthen the kwacha? The way you strengthen the kwacha is not printing new notes, which fed easily, Costa. It is in implementing clear policies that are pro-growth, growing the economy, Costa, as per UPND projections of 10% per annum. That's where you would increase economic activity. So let me, let me give you, at this point, four anchors of the UPND policies. Maybe that's how we should answer this, your myriad of questions. I call them myriad of questions because you are throwing quite a number at the same time. Some of them not meaning the same. UPND's main thrust is effective, efficient, prudent economic management. That's what distinguishes us from PF. Thinking through with a clear vision, dropping that vision into policies. Dropping the policies, third level now, eh? vision, number one, two policies, number three, into clear instruments. Some of them are legal, framework. Some of them are specific measures, such as, for example, in this case, we will have a specific intervention in the area of monetary policy that will basically stabilize interest rates, Costa, to make the price of a commodity called money affordable 
to businesses. Yeah. Not to cut you short. Right? Others would argue and say, HH, you're talking about your wishes and wants. They want to hear the specifics of the house. That's what I'm saying. B because <laughs> because even, even with your critics yeah. uh, on, on to the PF, everybody criticizes them to say they didn't know that were, they were in for. They have also admitted that the problems are more than they anticipated. Without, without your experience, because you're saying you have had no experience of being into government, what makes you so sure that you would turn this We have the experience. First, we have the right training, mm. Costa. Mm. They start from there. You, can't, you cannot train a guy to understand the economy like the present-day president. You cannot train him because he hasn't got the necessary background. We have that background. What about his cabinet, his advisors? Hey, <laughs> Costa, if, if a president blames the Commissioner General of ZRA for introducing a particular statutory instrument, yet you know that uh, the creation of statutory instrument, that it goes to cabinet first. Who is the chairman of cabinet? It's the president. How did the president allow the wrong instruments to come through? Because he didn't understand. If he understood, which I, I know he doesn't understand, if he understood, then he was sleeping on duty. You cannot be a chief executive of a country and you're sleeping on duty. This is the failure we have. So first is the education cost, the right education. What Zambia needs today is an economic management capabilities. And that's what UPND offers. It's not just for cabinet. It's also at the chief executive of the country's leadership, which is the president's. Because otherwise, your cabinet ministers will bring wrong proposals, mm. which result into things such as statutory instrument 33. And then because you don't understand, as president, you sign them off or you authorize them as chairman of cabinet. And when the citizens now pay the, pre the price of the importers in commercial markets, mm. Zambians who live off trading and now have to raise more kwacha <laughs> to buy the same quantity of goods mm. to sell to feed their children because they have no jobs, they now have basically to lose money. So that, we cover, so that we cover track yeah? on so many issues. Yes. Uh, I know you're saying I'm throwing a myriad of issues, but mm. let, me, let me put it like this again. Yeah. On the issue of the exchange rate, mm. when it, it, it's, it hit high, almost over 30%, Part of the interventions that government took through Minister Chikwanda were obviously to reverse these two SIs that I talk about, the 55 and the 33. He reversed them. The Bank of Zambia pumped in over 180,000 US dollars onto the market trying to stabilize. Their defense was the, high, the, the dwindling copper prices and the external pressure on, on, on the international market. And my question again to you, Mr. President, this evening, how do Zambians get the value out of their kwacha, moving from where we are? First and foremost, Costa, it was wasting money, taxpayers' money. You know, when we talk of prudence ourselves, this is one of the areas. Mm. Because there was no thinking in implementing this monetary policy instrument called SI33, the price citizens paid and taxpayers was for the Bank of Zambia to do what is called open market operations, to intervene in the market, basically taking away dollars that should have been used to buy, say, productive equipment, which would increase intra-economic activity. That's where your real true value of the currency comes from. If you manage other variables such as efficiency, effectiveness, and also optimization, or indeed prioritization. I'm throwing a couple of things here, because we've got to move in. Now, there was none of that, no thinking through. And in the end, there was wastage of resources. That is extravagance. We call it extravagance in the UPND, and you will not see us falling into those traps. The next issue is that it is not a matter of looking at uh, the variables we call in economics exogenous. What is exogenous? Out of your control. Because you don't control the copper price. The copper price, as a government of Zambia, is not controlled by you. It's controlled by the London Metal Exchange. That is where, basically, the copper price is decided. It's out of your control. So you must not focus on issues that are outside your control. You must look at how you utilize endogenous variables, variables within your control that you can manipulate to improve, if you like, the currency or stabilize your currency. Such as? I've told you already. Mm. Monetary policy instruments that you put in place. That's I, what I've I, said. I ask like this because yes. do you think from an economic perspective, mm. as an economist yourself, mm. that the kwacha can bounce back? Not under the... If it bounces back, it's temporary under the PF. 
Because the fundamentals of running the economy under the PF, the structure of the economy, the anchor legs on which the economy should accelerate growth are not there. Because the vision of the PF is not there. The policy is clarity in policy framework. Consistency. There is what we call in business and in finance and economics, you know, cost of that. For us in UPND, we want to create an attractive business environment. Not just an attractive business environment, a stable business environment. Not just stable, mm. predictable. Because then businesses can plan their activities and decide what levels of investment to make in different areas. And they can basically calculate their return. When you create that in a business environment, you will see more investments cost. You will also see then mm. more jobs, not this my, you know, announcement or pronouncement of more jobs. You don't even understand how jobs are do created. You That's share, what PF has do created. you share concerns with other stakeholders at the rate at which the PF is boring and the danger of Absolutely. getting back into a debt trap? Absolutely. We are now accruing repayment terms of about 10%. 86 million US dollars we need to pay per month in certain bonds. With that background given, the manner in which these bonds are being expended, mm -hmm. is it the correct way? Absolutely not. It cannot be correct under the PF. Because as I said to you, they don't think through these issues. You don't go to the market to borrow. Before Costa number one, you have looked at your domestic revenue opportunities. Because borrowing money has a cost. The cost is called interest, which is what you have just called a service. It's not just servicing, it's amortization. It's not just interest cost, it's compound interest. In, in most of these loans, it's compound interest. Because if you are slow in repaying according to schedule, the unserviced interest is added on to the principal and it becomes compound interest when it is charged next time. So this is the price Zambians are paying for electing a party like PF in office. The issue I'm talking about, number one for us in UPND, we will not go out to borrow money unnecessarily when we have domestic revenue opportunities. And I'll give you an example. Ensuring that we generate reasonable returns, treasury income I'm talking about, from various sectors in the economy. We're talking about an understanding of the tax system, fiscal system. A fiscal system that is fair, costa, that is equitable, is likely to generate more revenue opportunities. Allow me to quickly yeah? throw in one as time is yes. not with us. Yes. You're talking about raising domestic revenue. Exactly. How does Before this, you resort to borrowing. How does this country, because obviously the PF are saying we need to borrow, we can't generate more income domestically. But do you know why when, they're when saying pay, that? pay as you earn is the highest tax contributor to the budget. We have failed as a country 50 years down the line of independence. Mm -hmm. To make good out of our minds. Here are young techs like yourself who said, who say you understand the business. Exactly. Many of you are like out there. Why have we failed as Zambians to get what is due to us taxation-wise from the mines and other It's systems? lack of knowledge of those that are in leadership today on what to do. That, that's a fundamental issue. It's a failure of leadership anchored on lack of knowledge by those in the leadership today. They pretend to have knowledge, but they don't. If they have knowledge, then they have no interest in the welfare of this country. Because the actions demonstrate that either they have no knowledge or they lack interest in basically in the welfare of our country. And I want to give you a, a, a specific example. Why would anyone decent enough and worth their sort, Costa, be able or continue to go into the market to borrow? and you borrow at a cost higher than what is obtaining in the international market. Why would anyone normal go and borrow money and then you use it for consumption, number two, instead of applying it in productive ventures? Because if you use it for consumption, as the PF is doing, by and large, or inefficient investment, and I'll come to that third level, you are impairing your chances of repaying that loan. What is impairing? 
you're actually making it more difficult for you to service, to interest pay, and to amortize. Where should they have plowed it? In productive areas. Most of that money of the euro bond, 750 million euro bond, first and foremost, uh, cost, let me give you an uh, analysis of the, really the mediocrity in the PF leadership, which is costing citizens dearly. You go and borrow 750 million dollars, euro bond. Then what actually enters Zambia to benefit Zambia, theoretically, is less than $600,000. $600 million. Why? $600, $150 million disappears in legal fees, extravagant legal fees. You can argue that maybe they are corruptly you know, granted in terms of legal service providers. Not the legal service provider, but those who grant the services, who buy the services. Legal fees, treasury fees, you know. Now, as a few examples, so the net position of the $750 million euro bond that is received in this country is less than $600 million. Already you have lost that value, but you are supposed to pay interest on the cover value. I don't want to complicate the language to the listeners. The cover value being of the loan of euro bond being $750 million. But really, because of the way the loan is acquired by unprofessional or uninterested people, those in the PF today, Zambia receives less. You have already received less, Costa. Then you make that money sit in a bank account. And you ask the local banks to borrow it so that they can basically pay you interest to allow you to service your primary loan. So you have a secondary loan you want to lend to the local banks. Mm -hmm. And the local banks don't uptake it. Ask me a question why they don't uptake it. They don't uptake it because you introduce SI33, which limits the local borrowers to generate foreign exchange because of your lack of understanding of how different policies mm. work together. I would have loved you to give us that yeah. economics lesson yeah. far, but time is not with us. Let, let yeah. me quickly touch, it's mm. part of the economy, but on, on, on social and economics, mm. but very key political issue. Youth unemployment. Yes. Very, very key and crucial issue. Mm. Look, again, the PF lied about jobs. We in the UPND want to see youth unemployment as a major tragedy. We see it as a major tragedy. Again, the way we will deal with that, is focus on how UPND will deal with that, is by focusing on growth, pro-business environment, increased investment as a result of a conducive business environment. We don't mind whether it's domestic or foreign investment, because the thread of investment thinking is the same, is similar. I hope you get me on that one. Now, and that is where we expect an increase in economic activity and intra-economic activity. And that's where cost, we expect, for example, let me give you a specific example, how we want to create employment for the youth, which the PF has failed, and lies that they've created 450,000 jobs. <laughs> They're not there. You can go to the ZR and check if the pay, pay as UN roster has increased by a certain number. It hasn't. So the PF continues to lie in office. The jobs are not there. Let me cite just one example, a sector, agriculture. Agriculture is collapsing under the PF. At the production level, marketing level, pricing, distribution level of inputs. We as UPN do focus on a couple of anchors for agriculture. One is to lower the cost of inputs into agriculture production. By lowering the cost of, and we know what to, what to do and how to do it, Costa. When we do that, we have a chance to increase production at lower cost. Because Is many it a people, secret you can't ma tell the PF what Many people, even if I told them, they will not even pay attention. They don't, they don't pay attention to real management. Mm -hmm. They pay attention to contracts they give to friends and relatives. That's all. So they, can, they move public money into private pockets. And as I said earlier, call themselves businessmen. They're not businessmen. They're actually cheating the citizens. And citizens are aware that they're being cheated. Now... When you lower the cost of inputs, cost, you have a chance to increase production. When you increase production, you have an opportunity to lower the cost of food, the cost of millimeter. Very simple. But behind what I've told you, we have specific measures. Let, what let to me, do. Just, just, just hang on. Let me just finish uh, this. Yeah. Just the second issue, cost. As I said, you are throwing a myriad of questions mm. at the same time. 
The second aspect for us is that instead of as UPND, we will not sell milli mill to we will not sell maize to Zimbabwe. We will not sell maize to Congo. We want to sell milli mill to Congo and, and Zimbabwe. What have we done by doing that? We value added. By value adding Costa, we create jobs. That's how jobs come in the UPND through value addition. Let me give you an example of value addition. By selling milli mill as opposed to raw maize, it will mean that we can make our milling companies basically busy. And if they are not enough, people will invest in more milling companies. By investing in more milling companies or increasing the operating level, capacity, mm -hmm. not capacity, operating level from maybe 40% to 70%, 80% will create jobs. Due to time yeah. on youth employment, yeah. uh, we, we've completely felt there have been yeah. youth empowerment funds, CEC and so on and so yeah. forth. If you look at the Western world, yeah. they are not endowed with diamonds, oil, and so on. Yeah. But, but countries like India, countries yeah. like, you know, some, some of the BRICS, yeah. they are using technology and IP. Mm. It's, it's creative minds and ideas mm. of young people and companies that are basically dealing in software and other things. Can we do that as a country? We have what is called, Costa, competitive advantages. If you talk of India... India has accelerated on IT. They've invested in IT, starting with education, eh? science subjects and courses. It's been long coming. That's what we call in UPN planning. There's no planning under PF. The issue for us to identify competitive advantages, Zambia is generally called a landlocked country. We in UPN do land, want to call it a land linked. Zambia can be a huge food production center for our neighboring countries in the North Congo, Angola, and indeed other countries around. This is a, it's an issue of identifying your competitive advantage. It may not just be IT. Yes, you need IT as an application, even in farming. It's very important. And this is a quality of leadership that's missing, that's causing a country that's rich Costa to remain poor because of these decisions, these choices, the, we call it police choices. When you poor police choices because the leadership is bad, then citizens suffer. And they don't even identify these competitive advantages. So Zambia is a land-linked country. Production of food here, value adding. I was going to give you an example earlier, Costa, so that we contextualize these things. You can see the UPND thinking is very clear, very, very clear. No ambiguity in it is, for example, if you grow your Irish potatoes, Sometimes you go to the supermarkets in this country, you see Irish potatoes are packed nicely and the label is South African. The Irish potato produced in Zambia, grown in Zambia, is shipped out of Zambia, gets cleaned in some cleaning factories in South Africa, comes back in our retail shops here with a label. You cannot, that's suicide. If you know how to create jobs for the youth, even cleaning tomatoes after producing them here, you clean them and package them properly and present them in a shelf, at a shelf, on the shelf of a supermarket is value addition. We need to invite you some other yeah. time. My last question. The PF promised the Zambian 90 days. If Zambians were to give you a chance in 2016, how many days or months or years should they give you to turn the wheels of this economy around? The PF never understood anything cost. How that's, many that's days, why. months, or years should they give HH? Absolutely. We, we have a problem. Let me say to you how the UPND program is going to be implemented once we win an election. We have first what we call housekeeping, Costa. We have programs under housekeeping. Let me give you an example, if, since you're not asking me. To be able to change the bureaucracy in the business processes, to be able, Costa, to deliver a title deed. Today, to deliver a title deed it takes two, three years sometimes. Why should it take two, three years? We want to change business processes. For the sake of time and in, yeah. summary, in summary, how much time does the UPND this is need what I'm saying to, to you. turn this economy around? This is what I'm saying to you, Costa. An ignorant person will tell you, PF said 90 days, I will say 180 days. Well, you have, this a, plan. You have, we have a, a plan. You have a plan. That's mm. what I'm telling you. Immediately, we have those housekeeping ma ma uh, you know, uh, matters. Cleaning the house, such as cutting the business processes. If a title D takes to deliver, 
two years. Why should it take two years? We want to do it in 30 days. Once, if it's a matter of just conveyancing, hmm, if one person buys to another, 30 days. How long if should the Zambians give you to turn this economy around? The elections are every five years. Mm. For the first five years, Costa, one of our issues is to ensure that by the year two, year three, you can see with your eyes. You know, certain things your eyes won't see unless you, 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 you have knowledge and, the, and education in that area. So, but you will see your eyes that now you can get your title deed in a much quicker period. President now you Church, can thank get you so, much. You know, so many things. Thank That's you so what much. we need to know. Thank you so much. Yeah. My guest has thank been you. the UPND president, mm. Hagai mm. Hichilema. Mm. So much to cover. We apologize for not getting the so many texts, tweets, and Facebook messages. Uh, be assured that uh, in the near future we'll have uh, such a discussion. Thank you so much uh, no for problem. coming through. Appreciate that. And obviously uh, to those who did text in from across you know, Zambia and those who posted via Africa, we're so glad for the feedback mm. and indeed uh, both the, the good and the bad that is said about this program. Good evening and we'll see you next week. Good night. <laughs>